Hey, what's up, dudes? We are back for another video. Man, saying that every time is just... Everybody says it, right? Back for another video. Well, we're back for another video. Hi. Today, we're jumping into a couple of quick OBS tips that maybe you do or don't know. And I just wanted to get them out there because I think they're kind of important. And uh, just to kind of get some ideas in your head and what you can do with your own streams and what your own setups. So let's get right into the uh, some some five tips here that I got for you, okay? Five. Let's jump right in. Now, our first tip is actually something kind of useful, and this may come in play if you have snapping enabled or you're fine tuning your movements inside of OBS with a with a source. So right now we have a little gradient right here, and as you see, if I come close to an edge, it automatically wants to suck itself and magnetize or snap itself to the edge. Now, if I'm trying to get this fine tuned, but I want it somewhere in between these little snap sections, I can actually use my arrow keys, and if I just go ahead and hold my arrow key left, you can see it's moving pixel by pixel, so I can get it as close as I want to the edge, maybe without actually touching the edge. And so, you know, if I just keep holding this arrow key while I'm uh, in my display here, I can actually go ahead and fine tune it exactly where I want to be. And now I have this little tiny edge right here that you can see right alongside the, uh, the preview monitor. And uh, I normally can't get that close unless I, uh, you know, turn off the snapping. Now you can turn off snapping. You can always come over to your uh, your stream settings and your general, and you just go down here to the snapping. You could disable it or turn it down. And usually I have this set to about two, so it still snaps. But uh, let's just turn it off for now. Now if I hit OK, now if I get close to the edge, it won't actually snap. And uh, you know, no matter how close I get, it's not going to go ahead and snap for me. So I'll never know when I'm exactly perfectly lined up. And so, anyways, I your arrows can actually move your sources inside of OBS. Another kind of not so much a tip, but more of an add on to OBS is a thing called Capamon. Now, if you go to Capamon.com, you can actually see this in action and it's really quite simple. All you got to do is sign in with your Twitch account. And when you do that, it's going to ask for authentication. Uh, once you do that, you go ahead and just click that little X button and you actually get a quick couple selections for choosing a little character on your stream. So we actually have a couple right here. And if I go to the marketplace, you can see there's a lot to choose from now. These little guys right here will talk to your viewers, they'll dance, they'll do all kinds of different things here. You can actually see if I do a little drop down menu, they'll greet people, attack, dance, idle, eat, gift, and uh, you know, they'll thank people and, and they'll go to sleep at some time. So pretty cool to uh, have these and some of them are even free, much like this little gingerbread right here. So if I actually go to my collection, uh, you start off with two of them or you can maybe pay for uh, some more, but let's go ahead and take the little robot Capabot here and we're gonna go ahead and set that to a, uh, the default animation will be greet, and I'll choose this one right here. And inside you can actually set this to uh, trigger certain events when people type in chat, or something like that that is on you whenever you wanna have things uh, pop off here. So all you gotta do to get this set up, you just go ahead and click on the uh, four Twitch streamers, you click on that, when you do that, you're gonna get a little stream key here, and you just take that little URL command, and we're gonna go ahead and go back into OBS, we're gonna add a browser source, and when we do that, we're going to call this the Capamon. Hit OK. So we're going to go ahead and paste in our URL. And on the website, it actually says to set this to 640 by 400. And I'm going to go hit OK. And now we're going to have our little Capamon here. And I can actually blow him up to whatever size I want. Or I can simply change the URL dimensions inside the browser source. And now this little guy lives in my OBS or your OBS and will interact with your viewers if you choose to. Tip number three is actually going to be a two-parter here. So I'm actually going to give you a little bonus tip on top of the tip I'm about to tell you. So actually inside of OBS, you can actually modify your sources pretty simply by cropping them or stretching them. And it's very simple. All you do is click on the, uh, the, the source here as our camera. And if I go ahead and hold shift and I drag, I can actually squeeze this to whatever size I want. Or maybe I want to go squeeze it real down small like that. And maybe that's, uh, maybe that's what I want to do there. I'm actually going to revert that back to normal. And a secondary tip is if you hold alt, you can actually crop your images and have them be exactly what you want. So maybe you're uh, making a TikTok video and you wanna make sure you're at the right dimensions there. Well, now I'm cropped in and this could be our TikTok. Tip number four. Now, have you ever wanted to edit your stream info or see your own chat inside of OBS? Well, it's really simple using pop out inside of your own dashboard on Twitch. Now on Twitch, you actually have your stream manager right here as you can see. And I can actually go over here to where it says edit stream info or any of these things here. And I can go to the top right and you see these little three dots. If I click on those three dots and I click pop out, it's going to give me a popped out widget, which I can do whatever I want with. 
Now that I've popped this out, I can actually take this entire widget and put it into OBS, and that's using custom browser docs. Now, if I just click on this little URL and copy it, I can actually minimize this, go back inside of OBS, come up here to view, go down to docs, and then go over to custom browser docs. Now, if I click on that, it gives me an option to name the doc as well as uh, put in the URL. So we're gonna call this edit stream info and we're gonna paste our URL. And when I hit apply, now we're gonna get a separate widget in which we're gonna have to log in. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in real quick. I gotta use the uh, authenticator here to authenticate my account. You always gotta use that extra protection. Now that I've logged in, I actually have access to putting this wherever I want. Let's go ahead and uh, close out of our custom browser docs Thing there so now I can put this anywhere I want and you know maybe I'll put it on the left side of my OBS here and we'll actually drag it and make it a little bit bigger so now we can edit it on the fly so I could always change my stream title here and uh, go ahead and update if I choose to if we want to do our chat we can do the exact same thing you come over these little three little dots hit pop out and now we have a popped out version of the chat and I can go ahead and again take this link now that we've copied it we're gonna go back into OBS go again to view then docs then custom browser docs we're going to type in chat and we're going to paste in our new URL that shows uh, we're looking at the chat, hit apply. And now I'm going to have chat inside of my OBS, which I can put anywhere else, maybe on this side of my screen. I can take it even further and make my entire dashboard in here if I choose to. I go back into here and you can take any one of these sources and put it right back into OBS. So I could take my preview here. I could pop that out. I can also take my, uh, my quick actions here and pop that out. So if I go ahead and take this, we're going to copy this link, hit paste, hit OK. And now we have our little uh, our little buttons here, which we can uh, maybe run ads or whatever we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put this right on the top right there. So maybe that's something that I kind of like. And now I have a very customized OBS setup specifically for me. That is much like my dashboard rather than having Chrome open in the background. Tip number five. Did you know you can actually interact with your browser sources inside of OBS? Yeah, check this out. If I actually just put in a URL here, Right now we got a little clip of uh, one of my YouTube videos. Normally you can't really do anything with this. If I unlock it, I can't really click on any buttons or do anything other than move it around. So if I actually just lock it back here. So if I actually right click on my browser source, I can go over here to interact. And when I do that, it's gonna pop out this window and it's gonna be a whole separate page in which I can interact with. And I can actually go to different videos if I choose to. So just like that, now I'm interacting with my, uh, my search bar. Maybe I wanna look up cute cats. So if I type in cute cats and hit enter, now we can have, we have access to different kind of cat videos. So if I go ahead and click on this one, you're going to see it's going to automatically start playing. Now, if I go ahead and escape out of this window, you can see it's playing here, but again, I can't do anything with it here. So I need to right click on it, interact, and I can always, you know, bring this little window down here like so, and I can just go ahead and start to click through this and change it as I want, and it'll update inside of my OBS. That's it, that's this whole uh, video. I hope you guys learned something new today. Hopefully this stuff will come in handy at some point in your, uh, your future. Appreciate you guys watching, hope you have a good day, and I'll see you on the next video. All right, take care.